And we're live here at, uh, whoa, it's Ryan and that is Haley and we're Hi. at Tycor Title. What's up, Haley? Hi. I don't know if you can see our Tycor Title behind us, but that is where we are at today. It is Friday. It is gorgeous out. Finally, you know, feeling like we're getting into the fall. I know we've been talking. People are starting the holidays early. It's definitely going to be an interesting uh, holiday season we have coming up on us. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's we got 80 degree days and 40 degree nights. It's just that weird fall weather we get. Yep. So if you go out with video. your boots and sweater and you come back sweating and just like needing poor choice. Yeah, I put weird. on my Uggs yesterday and I was like, ooh, I don't know if it's quite a season yet, <laughs> but it felt nice. Well, today we have asked the audience and we, you know, we actually had a big block agent come to us this week. There was some questions regarding supplemental taxes. And so we thought, you know, this is a little outside of our comfort zone. So we actually yeah. had to do some there's like, like math involved. <laughs> yeah, there's math involved. There's actual numbers. It was a little crazy. But we want to talk to you guys about supplemental taxes because we are getting, you know, into that time where tax bills are going, tax bills are going out. And you know, there are supplemental taxes on people who purchased a home a few months ago or things like that, and they're questioning they thought they paid taxes through the transaction. What you know, or yeah, or they're questioning covered they, this already. Yeah, right? or they they have their taxes and they're aware of their property taxes, but there's also this supplemental tax bill on it and they're kind of questioning what is this? Why am I getting taxes? So we were inspired to do a tie core title talk. Ask the audience. On supplemental, supplemental taxes. taxes. Yes. Okay. So, so supplemental taxes, where do we start? I mean, so it's I a little bit of an enigma in the, in the transaction, and then it seems to be like it can happen after close. It does. It can, yeah, okay. it definitely happens. So kind of just a little background so you guys know how supplemental taxes took an effect. Um, it was 1983, actually. It was a California law that had passed because they wanted to give to back to the schools. It's supposed to um, create $300 million in school aid a year. Okay. So that's kind of where the supplemental taxes bill came from whether we believe or not if that actually goes to school who knows it's you know we lovely so. california we hope, we so, hope so but this is exactly how it came into play so how does supplemental bills affect you what is it and where does it come from so i'm guessing that there's appreciation or depreciation and you're either getting a credit or you owe the county money is that so, to supplement what you already paid well supplemental taxes actually takes place so when you are in a transaction and you there's any time there's a change of ownership okay. or any time there's new construction gotcha. so and it's crazy because it doesn't necessarily happen right after close and the county comes in and assesses the property it could take effect anywhere from three weeks Two weeks after close, the county can come in and reassess the property, or it could be up to six months. So no wonder people get blindsided. So wait, any vesting change? So when I go from like Ryan Lipsy Trust to Ryan Lipsy to refi and then back, mm -hmm. that triggers a reassessment. It could trigger a reassessment oh, anytime there's a vesting change. So it's very hard to know exactly when you're going to get billed for this, when you're going to know. So it's important to educate yourself to let your clients know that supplemental taxes are a thing. They are an assessment of the new ownership. If there's been any added value appreciation to the property, they there's actually a chart. It's called a proration chart, and it will. Uh, that's where the math happens. That's right? where the math that's happens. That's where all the math happens. So I'm like, an English major. I don't know. It you, goes. You major in math. Right? I did business. I majored oh. in business, so kind of. Eh, yeah. But there was math involved. <laughs> so like, if you buy a property August, and they so for supplemental taxes, they say July first. That is the day that it cuts off because that's when the new tax bills come in to play so mm -hmm. if you buy in august you are prorated for the entire year to july 1st and so you're prorated your proration factor is 92 percent right. all the way until the next july oh, and then it must come down and then so it comes down each, exactly I so see. they only prorate on you the can hit us up rate. if you want a copy of the proration chart. Yeah. we actually have a chart we're right. actually going off a script this time I, oh guys well not really <laughs> scripts but yeah. actually have notes in front of yeah. us that's the math There's um no math so there us. is a math stuff down. regarding um supplemental taxes and it does determine the proration amount on you know what month you pot your property or what month there was a vesting change to July 1st. So there is a whole tax breakdown on it. We'll make sure to send that to you. But it's not easy to predict. That's kind of the hard thing where supplemental taxes get a little, you know, 
because convoluted with your clients because it's not easy to predict. You don't necessarily know. And the county may tell them when to expect it, it or how much they're going to be. Or if they're not going to get a set, they don't know. Like the county could never come and reassess the property. It's very interesting how it happens. It depends on the back flow. It even says like in our notes here that um, it really depends on how much workflow the county has, how they're going, how the taxes. Which they've been is. under a tremendous amount of stress with the refinance boom, the purchase market, the way it is. They really don't have their bandwidth has been depleted, especially because yeah. they're having to observe COVID in indoor working kind of like you know personal space right. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely. I mean, recording processes. You guys all know we're getting we're calling clients, we're calling you guys till like seven o'clock at night with confirmation. So yeah. Recordings have slowed down just because there's such a high volume. So one point I want to highlight is, because we've run into this, where people say, Ryan, I want to change and add my mom or my daughter, or I want to get it out of the trust or LLC and into a private entity. and But I don't want to pay supplemental taxes. There used to be a way, and, and apparently before my time, and I started in 2001, there was this method where you could conceal the value and the address and the whereabouts of the property that you were recording on and that's no longer in place yeah, there's no way to like you know sign over or deed somebody on or off once that vesting changes now we can't say that a hundred percent of the time you're going to get an assessment because people don't mm -hmm. but we also just like that if that's true then the reverse is true we can't tell you that you won't get assessed so it can trigger an assessment which leads to further taxes so we want to make everybody aware of that going in and okay with if they were to get an assessment. Right, and all your supplemental taxes are secured on the roll, so they are payable in your two installments of your taxes. So that's important to know too, you can pay that with your two installments of your taxes due. Um, but supplemental taxes are very dicey. They can get people, you know, questioning what it, you know, what do I have to pay this every year? Is this a new tax thing? Like, no, it's just the supplemental uh, taxes of the appreciation of when you bought your home to July 1st. Yeah, so is it ongoing? So you get the two bills, pay them, you're done with supplemental mm -hmm. taxes for that year. Yep. Now, if you do another event, like a vesting change, or you build an ADU even, right? right. Then you can trigger a reassessment for your value, and then if it comes in higher than the last time it was assessed, then you're going to owe more taxes. It, now, yeah. I remember back in 08, 09, 10, People were getting checks because they were reassessed at a lesser value. So they were getting checks, maybe rebates, or their taxes came down. So th that happens too. I don't, I would. That's if, the past. I don't if, know if that's. I don't think we're headed for that anytime soon. But, and if I'm a betting person, I bet you they get the positive more taxes way more free. And they're dead on on yeah, those. And then right. they maybe overlook when you're. Value comes down a little bit. Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry I said July first for the tax year. It's June thirtieth. So, but it was okay. July first is the amount that it would go to. So, if you bought in August first, it would go to June thirtieth. July first would have the bill. I'm so proud so, of us. Like we got yeah, dates right. Yeah, we have dates right. right. So you know, it's important to know too that. I am going to read this one off my script, guys, just because I don't want to mess this up. That the supplemental tax becomes effective on the first day of the month following the month which changes the ownership. So that's exactly what we just talked about. It right. affects the following month. So it's important to know that for you guys. Um, there is no assessment. It actually says their effective date, July 1st. Then there is no supplemental assessment on the current tax roll or the entire supplemental assessment will be made to the tax roll being prepared to reflect full cash value. So yes. July 1st, I mean, that must be a good day to buy a property because you're not going to get assessed on the supplemental taxes. So that's interesting to know. I didn't know that. So um, it, here's an example. Do you want to take over the example? Let him know like what that would be. The example here says that the county assessor finds that the supplemental property taxes on your new home would be $1,000 for a full year. The change of ownership took place on September 15th, with the effective date being October 1st. The supplemental taxes would therefore be subject to a proration factor of 0.75 and would be 750 bucks. So there's a proration based on when in the year you buy. We can send you the chart. Mm -hmm. That's good to know because if supplemental taxes were $3,500 on your property and you were freaking out because now you have an extra 3500 but you were in the, close to the effective date and you might your proration factor might be 0.25 mm -hmm. so really it's 25 percent of the 3500 so important to understand this that's why we have a really handy dandy info sheet on it we'd love to mm -hmm. send you message share comment email us call us whatever yeah and we'll get that to you. one more just important note too is you know for agents education wise for us education wise um you know it comes up like well why weren't these paid during escrow 
well, there's no way of us knowing the supplemental bills because it's after the change of ownership, which is after escrow. Yeah. So that's why supplemental taxes don't get paid in escrow. That's why they come up after the fact. So no. That's another so, ask the audience yeah. is, hey, how come we can't just figure out what they would be and then pay them through the proceeds? And we'd love to do that, but we don't know the number that it's going to be until we get the reassessment from the county mm -hmm. the it's, next month. Yeah, it's, you know, so don't shoot escrow officers. Don't shoot the title. Yeah. Supplemental taxes come up. It is has nothing to do. It's all based on the tax assessor, the county, when they ha go in and have the time to reassess the property it's based off vesting changes so there's no way of knowing to pay it through escrow so just be informed on supplemental taxes we'll send you this really cool sheet we love it we always look at it when we need to know proration amounts and stuff so yeah i mean it's, and it's uncle sam the irs you're not going to get away from him just cut yeah. the check just cut the check it, just, just pay you your know, taxes fbi cia irs don't mess with those <laughs> Those acronyms we don't want to take care of. So, right, any but. other questions, anything you guys have, we'd love to send you this sheet. Um, if you guys have questions about it, or if you guys are working with buyers right now, let them know, you know, supplemental taxes when they have go over, when you go over the tax portion with them, do let them know about that. If they have any more further questions, have them send them our way. We're happy to field phone mm -hmm. calls, text, DM. And in the month of Thanksgiving, we're grateful for you guys and all of our customers out there supporting us. We're just so thankful. I think, yeah, I mean, we all should be very grateful here in San Diego. We live in a very robust market right now, so we are extremely grateful for you guys. Grateful to be here in San Diego and grateful for this. So anything you guys need, let us know. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Enjoy Bye. the sunshine. Happy Thanksgiving. Coming up soon, right? We'll be another trading. Uh, yeah, that <laughs>